We've seen how to create arrays. We've seen how to access individual elements using an index. Now let's talk about changing them. We can use the exact same syntax we've already seen, where we used an index and square brackets, but we can assign a new value, and that will change whatever is at that index. So unlike with a string, where if we have ha ha as a variable, let laugh equals ha ha, if we access laugh of zero, we get h, Remember that strings are immutable, so I can't change that to an uppercase H. If we look at laugh, it's still ha ha. Arrays are different. Arrays are mutable. We can change them whenever we want. So if we make a new array, let's go with shopping list again. And let's start off with a cheddar cheese and one other item. How about 2% milk? Great. So we've made an array. We can access things out, but now I want to change something. So let's say I changed my mind about the milk and I actually want whole milk. I need to access that index, which would be zero, one, index of one, and then set that to whole milk and save. Let's take a look at shopping list. It now only contains cheddar cheese and whole milk. I'll zoom out a bit. I could also go in and add something else into the array. So this is how you could update a value. To add something to the end, I would need to know the last index. So I could use the length, or we could just count manually. So we know that there's zero, there's one. So index two would be the next index. Shopping list of two equals, what else do I need? How about ice cream? We'll save, refresh, Shopping list now has three items, cheddar cheese, whole milk, and ice cream at index of two. So this works. The problem with this approach right here is if you don't know how many items are in there, it's a little clunky. You have to calculate it. Let's say the shopping list is out of view. Where it's written in, in code dynamically. Data is coming from a database or from users. We don't know if there's 10 or 20 items we would have to do something like this to always add to the end shopping list of shopping list dot length equals and then whatever we want to add to the end let's go with uh, tomatoes like that is there an E? Oof, I don't know okay yes there is I just had a minor stroke there is an E there and this should work no matter how long shopping list is this will always add to the end so let's refresh. We'll look at shopping list again. Now has tomatoes at the end. And I could do this multiple times further. So we could verify that. Instead of tomatoes, let's also add potatoes. Refresh, and it still works. So this is great, and it works, but it's not ideal. Uh, there are easier ways to add to the end, which we'll see in the next video. There is a built-in method to help you add new items to the end of an array. Really, the only time I use this syntax is when I'm trying to change a value that's already in an array. So instead of cheddar cheese, or instead of 2% milk, I want whole milk. But I'm not adding in a brand new item. Even though this does work, you just have to be very particular about where you put something. And be cognizant of the fact that when you add something at index of 1, or let's say something at index of 0, shopping list of 0, I'm not putting this at the beginning and shifting everything over. I am changing the very first item. So shopping list of zero is now going to be uh, bread. If we look at shopping list, cheddar cheese is gone. So I'm completely rewriting it or overwriting it. There is a way to add to the beginning, but we haven't seen it yet. That's in the very next video. So we've seen how you can use an index to change a value, how you can use the length to add to the end. We're going to see a nicer way of doing this up next.